I'll first demonstrate how to convert an AM radio to FM, and then I'll show you some of the technical details. This is an AM radio, tube radio, typical of tube radios from the early 1930s until the end of the tube era. In my city, there are not many interesting AM radio stations, but I still like to use vintage radios. So I have devised a way to convert these radios to FM. The conversion does not require any permanent modifications to the radio, and the radio works the same way as it did before, only it receives FM. So first I'll show you how the conversion is done, then I will get into more of the technical details. You must start with a working AM radio. This particular Westinghouse radio has uh, AM and N short wave and push button tuning, uh, but that makes no difference to the conversion. Notice I get one station at 1200, bunch of static really, and another station down at 570. These are the AM state, the only AM stations that I get. I'll turn the radio around and show you how the conversion is done. This circuit board here, this is the circuit, this circuit board is what does all the magic. It is connected through the tube sockets, so no permanent uh, changes or connections to the radio are made. You simply remove a tube, put, put the tube into the socket adapter, and then plug the so socket adapter back into the radio. We have to do this for two tubes, the detector and uh, the converter. And, uh, and that's it. That's, all, that's the only modification that is required of the radio. This white wire here is just the uh, little FM antenna. Helps, uh, it needs a little bit of an antenna to work well. I'll turn this around and we'll see how it works. Let the radio warm up a little bit. You're now hearing FM on this formerly AM radio. And here there's many, many more stations because we simply have more FM stations in our area all across the whole band. Now, of course, the calibrations don't mean anything anymore, but you can usually find the stations you're looking for. The quality of the sound will depend on the radio. Um, in general, these radios have limited audio range, but if you have an, a high-end radio, it'll sound quite good. Uh, notice that uh, the knobs work exactly the same way as they did before. The volume control controls the volume, the tone control has the power switch, and, and it, it's scratchy, but, it, but the tone control works. Tuning is done exactly the same way as it was with the AM radio. So next I'll describe uh, the board in a little more detail. This is essentially a review of what I said during the video. Here's how it works. A frequency to voltage converter converts the local oscillator signal, which is typically about 1 to 2 megahertz, uh, into a variable voltage from 0 to 1 volt. Uh, this variable voltage is fed to the tuning port of a single chip uh, FM tuner chip so that it tunes from the full FM band uh, as the LO signal is uh, tuned. Here's a schematic of the circuit board. The uh, phase lock loop is on the left hand side and the single chip FM tuner is on the right. I suggest you check the web, my website uh, if you'd like more details. This is what the completed circuit board looks like. It's a two layer um, double sided uh, circuit board with plated through holes. 
about 55 by 85 uh, millimeters in size. Everything you need to make one of these converter boards can be found on my website. Um, you're certainly welcome to build it from scratch, but I suggest that the two-sided circuit board makes it much, much easier to assemble. Uh, the converter board uh, uses mostly through-hole components, uh, which makes it pretty easy to assemble, but there are two surface mount ICs uh, with 50 mil pitch, uh, which you probably want to use solder paste and a hot air gun or solder paste and a hot plate to do that. Um, I mentioned here you can also use uh, two boards with two radios to make yourself a stereo system if you like. There are three connections required between the converter board and the host radio. Local oscillator comes from the converter tube or in fact from the uh, local oscillator variable capacitor. Uh, the audio goes into the detector tube um, and you get power usually from the uh, detector tube filament circuit as well. Uh, th this is shown schematically uh, in the next slide. The best way to connect to the radio is with a socket adapter. Uh, a socket adapter is made with the base from an old tube, perhaps a burnt out tube, uh, connected to a socket, usually one to one connection between the pins. Um, the connections you need to go to the FM converter can be taken uh, from, from these connections. The advantage of the socket is, of course, that uh, it can be plugged into the radio without making any permanent changes or connections to the radio. Uh, you're going to have to make this yourself because uh, the socket adapter uh, depends on the radio, it depends on how the tube is used, um, and depends on the physical size that you have uh, in your radio. So. Uh, some familiarity with vintage radio, uh, electronics, and um, soldering techniques uh, would be uh, required. The FM converter can be used on most most tube radios. I would say almost all tube radios, in fact. The very popular All-American 5 radios or the related uh, AC uh, sets uh, that usually have five tubes or sometimes four or six or more. Um, most uh, Car radios as well with 12 volt or 6 volt car radios with negative ground can also be used. Less common radios, and I dare say more interesting radios, can also be converted, such as radios with a separate local oscillator tube. Um, older radios that use 2.5 volt heaters instead of the usual 6.3 volt heaters. Um, I don't have much experience with European radios, but they are also good candidates. And I'd love to see this applied to a magnificent radio like a Scott Philharmonic or a McMurdo Silver or something like that. I think it would sound fantastic. There are a few radios that are not as easy to convert. Clearly TRF and regenerative radios do not have an LO. That makes them a bit difficult. A broken radio probably isn't, if it doesn't work on AM, it's not going to work on FM. Um, and portable tube radios um, are problematic because they have uh, lower voltages and lower currents. Um, uh, you would need to uh, find another way to supply uh, the power to the uh, converter chip. There you have it. I hope I've uh, left you a little bit intrigued about the possibilities of using this in some of your radios. Uh, certainly contact me or check my website out if you have any further questions.